Chapter 902 Growth Surprisingly, Lu Mei didn't even seem to have noticed Shen Long's appearance at this moment, and instead, she sat down on the ground in a lotus position as her body began to circulate the blood absorption art almost automatically. It was almost as if her senses had all been cut off after hearing Little Black's voice inside her head, before her body instantly began to circulate the blood absorption art on its own. Meanwhile, Shun Long was briefly taken aback after noticing Lu Mei's strange situation, before his lips soon curved into a rare, radiant smile, as he immediately realized what was going on. It was obvious that Lu Mei had somehow entered a state of complete enlightenment, as her body had now shut off all her senses and was focused solely on sensing the spiritual qi in the air around her. Of course, Shun Long wasn't the only one who was taken aback by the unexpected scene in front of him. Inside the foggy space in the stone of time, Little Black's deep azure eyes shone with a momentary glint of surprise, before the Black Dragon muttered to himself. Although her talent may not be as good as those three brats, her luck and comprehension ability are both topped her. This time, Little Black's words even carried a rare hint of praise, as the Black Dragon gazed at the meditating Lu Mei who was now absorbing the pure immortal chi in the air around her at a terrifying rate. Of course, Little Black's surprise was only natural given the current situation. After all, entering a state of true enlightenment like this was actually an extremely rare case for any cultivator, and would always be regarded as a top-tier fortuitous opportunity. Whether this was in the central continent, or even in the limitlessly vast immortal dimension where true immortals reigned supreme, Little Black knew that entering a state of complete enlightenment wasn't something that could be sought after regardless of one's cultivation base, and could only be chanced upon. Both the cultivator's mind and body needed to be fully focused on a single goal by the time they reached enlightenment, while paying absolutely no heed to anything else. This was what it truly meant for a cultivator to completely rid themselves of any distracting thoughts and focus entirely on their Tao. This was also the reason why, the vast majority of cultivators in the world often chose to enter seclusion when they were about to attempt a breakthrough in their cultivation. It was all for the sake of riding themselves from any distracting thoughts and focus fully on their breakthrough. As time continued to pass, Lu Mei gradually absorbed more and more of the immortal chi the heaven-swallowing vine produced, and mere moments later, she had even ended up alerting Jiang Chen, Bai Long Tian, and Xingyi who were quietly cultivating just a few dozen meters away from her. Bai Longtian's handsome features were the first ones to contort the moment he sensed the disturbance in the distance ahead of him, before a look of undisguised shock gradually crept up on his face as he turned his head in Lu Mei's direction. Xingyi and Jiang Chen opened their eyes as well, barely a moment after Bai Longtian, but before any of them could speak, Shun Long hurriedly waved his right hand before a thin, translucent chi barrier was formed around Lu Mei, completely isolating her from everyone around her. Of course, it didn't take long for Jiang Chen and the others to realize what was going on and tell that Lu Mei had somehow entered an extremely miraculous state, where she was now absorbing the immortal chi from the heaven-swallowing vine at a terrifying rate. But they still had a hard time believing the scene in front of their very own eyes. After all, Jiang Chen and the others all knew that Lu Mei was normally cultivating what would be considered an evil cultivation technique in the outside world, where she would absorb the qi from the enemies she killed directly. Unlike the vast majority of cultivators in the world, Lu Mei would never sit down and meditate to absorb the spiritual qi in the air around her, and would directly purify all the qi she had previously absorbed instead. Naturally, Bai Long Tian, Jiang Chen, and Xingyi were all aware that although Lu Mei's cultivation technique gave her an overwhelming advantage in terms of cultivation speed compared to everyone else, it was also extremely dangerous as well. After all, just like any other evil cultivator, Lu Mei had to be wary of her mental state at all times and properly ward off all outside influences, regardless of how small and insignificant they may be, or she would risk falling into qi deviation during any of her breakthroughs. In fact, if it wasn't for how compatible the blood absorption art was with her Tao of Death, Jiang Chen and the others were practically certain that Lu Mei would have most likely changed to a different cultivation technique a long time ago, 
even if it meant that her cultivation speed became far lower than it currently was. Nevertheless, one thing was for certain. Lu Mei's current state right now was way out of the ordinary. After all, evil cultivation techniques were known for utilizing numerous unorthodox methods instead of cultivating normally, regardless of how cruel those methods may be. Whether that involved killing other cultivators and refining their souls directly, torturing them alive until their minds broke and their bodies gave way, or even hacking them into pieces and using various secret methods to extract their cultivation bit by bit. All of these were methods that most evil cultivators would normally use without batting an eye. In comparison, Lu Mei's blood absorption art wasn't overly cruel, but it surely was tyrannical. Still, Jiang Chen and the others had never heard of any evil cultivation technique that allowed its user to absorb the spiritual qi in the air, the same way normal cultivators did. This was one of the core fundamental differences between orthodox and evil cultivation techniques in the first place. This was also why Jiang Chen and the others were so taken aback by the scene in front of them. Besides, regardless of how miraculous Lu Mei's blood absorption art may be, it shouldn't be this heaven-defying, to the point where it could create such a massive commotion simply when Lu Mei was absorbing the spiritual qi in the air around her. After all, Jiang Chen and the others could tell that the rate at which Lu Mei was currently absorbing pure qi right now was in no way inferior to their own when they were going all out earlier. No, in fact, it was far beyond that. At this point, Lu Mei was already absorbing nearly 70% of the pure immortal qi in the air, and it didn't look like she was going to slow down any time soon. A few moments later, Shun Long gradually turned his focus away from the cultivating Lu Mei and looked at the distant Bai Long Tian and the others, before he said with a smile. It's been a while. Jiang Chen Long Tian. Let's spar. Chapter 903, Sixth Stage. Part 1. Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian were both taken aback after hearing Shun Long's invitation for a spar, while Xingyi's eyes widened in surprise before a look of unconcealed quickly astonishment covered her face. Whether it was back in the holy sect or when they were traveling throughout the central region, it was extremely rare for Shun Long to ask Jiang Chen or Bai Long Tian for a spar, and the same went for her and Lu Mei as well. Although every single one among them could be considered a genius with enough talent to enter the top ten in the martial role of honor of the holy sect, Bai Long Tian and the others all knew that in terms of talent, the gap between themselves and Shun Long was practically insurmountable. The few times that Bai Long Tian and Jiang Chen had sparred with Shun Long to truly test themselves, they found themselves rendered completely helpless against him. Although Jiang Chen, Bai Long Tian, and Xingyi all cultivated unique level Daos, and Lu Mei's Dao of Death was even a supreme level Dao on par with Shun Long's Dao of Time, all of them intrinsically understood that they stood no chance against him in a one-on-one -on -one spar. In fact, even without his Tao of Time and just his Tao of Space alone, Xingyi and the others eventually realized that it was almost impossible to touch even the hems of Shun Long's clothes during those spars. Still, although those spars could barely be called spars and were more like one-sided beatings instead, they were still beneficial to Jiang Chen and the rest as it allowed them to draw out the full extent of their latent talent without holding back. In fact, Jiang Chen was the only one who came close to touching Shun Long during those spars, when he trapped him inside his kingdom of darkness. After a moment of brief hesitation, Bai Long Tian nodded his head at Shun Long before asking in a somewhat uncertain tone, Brother Shun, what should we do with Sister Lu? Won't we interrupt her cultivation if we fight here? However, Shun Long merely shook his head and didn't even glance in Lu Mei's direction as he answered confidently. Don't worry. The qi barrier around Mare is no weaker than the one protecting this entire five elements protective formation. Even a peak rank nine Dao king can't break it by themselves. Bai Long Tian and Jiang Chen both nodded their heads and prepared to begin, while Xingyi retreated further back in the distance to watch their sparring match, with her bright emerald eyes sparkling with excitement. However, right before they could start, Shun Long, who was stretching his arms in front of him, suddenly added in. All right. I nearly forgot to say this. Jiang Chen, Long Tian, 
Rely solely on your physical bodies for this spar. Of course, aside from using your qi cultivation, you are free to go all out. Jiang Chun and Bai Longtian were both taken aback when they heard that, but neither of them hesitated or questioned Shun Long as they quickly began the fight. Bai Longtian was the first one to take the initiative, his body suddenly emitting a bright golden color that covered him from head to toe, before he shot towards Shun Long at full speed. Although Bai Longtian was still an early six-stage body refiner, both the strength and speed of his physical body could still rival quite a few middle-stage Dao kings back in the holy sect. Regardless of how miraculous Shun Long's monarch's eternal body may have been, it couldn't directly contend with such an attack while it was still at the peak of the fifth stage. Shun Long would either have to use his Black Dragon's bloodline, or rely on some other trump card if he wanted to take it head-on. And yet, contrary to Bai Longtian's expectations, Shan Long merely smiled lightly and simply clenched his right fist as he sent a punch forward, before asking in a playful manner, Longtian, are you going easy on me? Didn't I tell you to go all out? At the same time that Shan Long's words echoed in the air, his fist also met with Bai Longtian's, producing a deafening sound akin to a tiny explosion, before Bai Longtian's figure was sent flying back for more than ten meters. 33 feet, until it came to a halt. The fight had only just started, yet Bai Long Tian could just gaze at the smile plastered on Shun Long's face with a dazed look on his face, before he asked in a voice filled with surprise. Brother Shun, you actually broke through? It was obvious that Shun Long's mood was extremely joyful at this moment, and from the aura coming from his body, Bai Long Tian, Jiang Chen, and Xingyi could all tell that he had finally stepped into the sixth stage of body refinement. Indeed, Shun Long was feeling extremely happy right now. After all, the cultivation of his physical body had been stumped into the peak of the fifth stage for far too long. Even after becoming a peak rank three Dao king, his body cultivation was simply lagging too far behind to prove of any assistance to him in his latest fights. With that same smile on his face, Shun Long nodded his head and felt the immense power coursing through his entire body as he explained. I just broke through and haven't had the chance to test out my current strength just yet. So, both of you, come at me with everything you've got. Nodding his head, Jiang Chen who was watching everything in the distance didn't wait for Bai Long Tian to launch another attack on Shun Long, and instead, he kicked the ground once, as a dense, Aura of darkness quickly blanketed his entire body as he immediately shot forward. Unlike Bai Long Tian, it was obvious that Jiang Chen wasn't planning on going easy on Shun Long. In the next moment, his fingertips suddenly bent forward, taking a shape similar to a bird's talons, before they made contact with Shun Long's fists. Chapter 904 Sixth Stage Part 2 Surprisingly, the next scene that followed left both Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian, and even the spectating Xingyi in the distance tongue-tied, before looks of disbelief quickly covered everyone's faces. Shun Long was merely pushed backwards for a couple of meters before coming to a stop, directly resisting Jiang Chen's attack. Naturally, to an outsider watching this scene, it would seem as if Jiang Chen held a slight advantage in this clash. After all, both he and Shun Long were in the early sixth stage of body refinement, yet he was the one who came out on top in this exchange. However, Jiang Chen understood better than anyone else that this wasn't the case, and the reason for that was very simple. He had actually imbued his Tao of Darkness in his attack, and yet Shun Long had resisted it head on. That's right. He didn't make use of his Tao of Space or any external treasures and had simply taken Jiang Chen's strike with his bare body. Naturally, the attack of a body refinement cultivator who was merely using the strength of his physical body, and an attack that was imbued with the power of their Tao were two completely different concepts that couldn't be compared. In the distance, Bai Long Tian who was planning on chasing after Shun Long after he used his Tao of space to dodge was now rooted on the spot, with a look of astonishment plastered all over his face. After all, just a moment ago, Bai Long Tian had simply been putting on appearances and hadn't really used his Tao of the Buddha when he attacked Shun Long. Since this was just a spar, 
he was first going to see what Shun Long was planning to use to resist his sixth-stage body refinement cultivation and wasn't going to go all out right from the start. However, after seeing that even Jiang Chen's normal attacks couldn't pierce through Shun Long's defenses, Bai Long Tian felt like he had been making a fool out of himself before a sense of shame began to overwhelm him. Did I seriously think that I could fight Brother Shun while holding back? I must have really grown complacent. As his thoughts reached this point, Bai Long Tian suddenly kicked the ground beneath him without any hesitation, as he shot towards Shun Long as well, while a dense golden aura quickly covered his entire body. This time, he wasn't planning to hold back either. At the same time, Shun Long lowered his head and glanced at his own hands, sensing a burning, almost corroding sensation that had already covered them. Even though Jiang Chen had already removed his talons from him, Shun Long could still catch a glimpse of a tiny black flame lingering on his skin, and could tell that this flame along with the burning sensation he was feeling both originated from Jiang Chen's Tao of Darkness. With a smile on his face, Shun Long suddenly jerked his arms outwards, forcefully dispersing the last few bits of the black-colored flame that were lingering on his skin, before he looked at Jiang Chen and called out. Good job, Jiang Chen. Gain. In the next moment, Jiang Chen didn't hesitate either, his talons sweeping towards Shun Long directly, even targeting a few of his vital spots in the process. Although those strikes weren't going to kill a six-stage body refiner, they were still going to inflict some serious damage if they landed, and the experience wasn't going to be a pleasant one. In a single moment, Jiang Chen had already struck more than ten times, each of his attacks carrying lethal precision and overwhelming force as they targeted Shun Long's vitals. And yet, Shun Long seemed to have effortlessly blocked every single one of those claws without exception, not allowing even a single one of them to land on his body. Nevertheless, as the two of them kept exchanging strikes, traces of black flame quickly began to appear on the surface of Shun Long's fists once more, before the familiar burning sensation appeared once again. This time, however, it was Jiang Chen's turn to become astonished as Shun Long's lips suddenly curved upwards, forming a faint, yet clearly discernible smile, before the corroding black flames instantly vanished from his arms. All of this took a while to describe, but this entire exchange had only lasted less than two breaths of time, before Bai Long Tian's figure finally appeared behind Shun Long. In the next moment, Bai Longtian's palm that was shrouded in a dense golden light hurled straight towards Shun Long's unprotected back. Watching the scene in front of him, Jiang Chen opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something, but before he could speak, Shun Long immediately turned around and glanced at the incoming palm strike from Bai Longtian before he clenched his right hand tightly and sent a fist forward in response. Boom! As Bai Longtian's golden palm met Shun Long's fist, Jiang Chen could clearly see the golden light around Bai Longtian's palm clash with a familiar looking, white colored light that had already covered Shun Long's fist, before Bai Longtian's figure trembled, and his body was sent flying backwards for more than a dozen meters. Only stopping after he was buried deep in the sand below him. A brief moment later, Bai Longtian flew out from the ground, patting away the sand that had covered his eyes along with his face before he quickly turned his astonished gaze towards Shen Long. Just like Jiang Chen, Bai Longtian's figure appeared to be devoid of injuries, yet just like Jiang Chen, he was also rooted on the spot, with a look of unconcealed shock on his face as he stared at the white-colored lightning around Shen Long's right hand. After a moment of hesitation, Bai Longtian took in a deep breath trying to calm down his turbulent emotions, before he looked at Shen Long and asked in a disbelieving tone, Brother Shun, what is this white lightning? Why does it give me the same sensation as a heavenly tribulation? Chapter 905 Windfall Both Jiang Chen, as well as the spectating Xingyi in the distance, now looked at the white-colored lightning around Shun Long's hand with incredulous looks on their faces, their expressions very similar to Bai Long Tian's, as the same question that he had just asked lingered on their minds. Even though Xingyi herself wasn't participating in the spar, she could clearly sense even from a distance away the unique aura that Shun Long's lightning was emitting, which greatly resembled the aura of the heavenly tribulations. Of course, 
Any Tao king who had already undergone their heavenly tribulation would be able to easily tell right now that there was an extremely strong resemblance between the white lightning around Shun Long's hand and the heavenly tribulation itself. Meanwhile, a faint smile slowly formed itself on Shun Long's lips as he lowered his gaze to examine the white-colored lightning crackling around his right hand, as the faint crackling of thunder started to grow even more pronounced with every passing second, almost as if the white lightning was gradually growing stronger alongside it. A moment later, Shun Long finally turned his gaze towards Bai Long Tian and the others before answering with a content smile. I'm not sure if it already has a name, but if I had to give it one, I would probably call it the Tao of Heavenly Tribulation. I did have to sacrifice quite a bit to get it, but it really was worth it in the end. Bai Long Tian and the others had already somewhat expected this answer, yet they still couldn't help but feel their minds buzz greatly the moment they took in Shun Long's words and realized the implications behind them. Although they had already guessed that Shun Long's white lightning was somehow connected to the heavenly tribulation he had faced earlier, hearing him actually confirm it was an entirely different matter altogether. After all, how terrifying was the heavenly tribulation? How many dazzling nascent soul stage cultivators had fallen to it throughout the countless years, failing to truly break through to the Tao King realm and becoming nothing more than ashes drifting throughout the endless river of time. Yet not only had Shun Long not died after facing a second heavenly tribulation at the peak of rank 3 in the Tao King realm, he had even managed to gain some insights into it, and could now use the power of the heavenly tribulation for himself. Of course, Xingyi and the others didn't miss the last part of Shun Long's sentence, realizing that Shun Long must have paid quite a hefty price to acquire this Tao of the heavenly tribulation of his. Nevertheless, it was obvious from the satisfied look on his face that the advantages must have outweighed the price he had paid by quite a bit. Inside the foggy space in the stone of time, Little Black gradually turned his gaze away from Lu Mei who was now fully immersed in her cultivation and no longer needed his assistance, and turned to look at the white-colored lightning around Shun Long's hand, before the Black Dragon muttered to himself. In the end, it's true that fortune and disaster go hand in hand. Master was truly close to death this time, but since he managed to survive, the benefits he reaped from this will simply be inestimable. Although Shingi and the others weren't aware of it, Little Black understood better than anyone what type of price Shun Long had to pay to obtain this Tao of the Heavenly Tribulation. That final bolt of Heavenly Tribulation that looked like a golden rock had already dealt tremendous amount of damage in his spiritual space, and had long since evaporated all of the remaining spiritual strength inside his spiritual sea moments after it appeared. Cracks that looked like spiderwebs had already started to spread on the walls of his spiritual space, and even his soul had teetered on the verge of collapse. In that final moment, seeing as how he didn't have any other option left, Shun Long ultimately grit his teeth and chose to burn all of the remaining blood essence that was dormant in his heart, as he drew out the full potential of his black dragon's bloodline. Doing so had elevated both his chi, the power of his fleshly body, as well as the level of his soul to an astonishing degree, allowing him to survive the onslaught of the golden rock until it finally exhausted all of its power and disappeared. What he had just used back then was a type of last resort technique that was essentially common knowledge among all bloodline cultivators, yet virtually no one would ever choose to use it, unless they were truly on their last legs and had absolutely nothing else to fall back on. By completely burning one's own blood essence, Cultivators who possessed unique bloodlines could temporarily increase the power of their fleshly body, their chi, and even the strength of their soul to an astonishing degree, so much that it could even allow them to transcend through cultivation levels and battle stronger foes. Of course, the increase that one would get was vastly dependent on the purity of their bloodline, as well as the rank of magic beast that it came from. Nevertheless, even if one's bloodline came simply from a rare rank magic beast, the increase in strength was nothing to scoff at. An average early stage Tao king with the bloodline of a rare rank magic beast who completely burned his blood essence would pose a threat to even late stage Tao kings and would force them to act with caution around him. As for people like Shun Long who possessed the bloodline of one of the most terrifying legendary magic beasts in the entire immortal dimension, 
it was simply impossible to estimate how much stronger he would get. Still, despite its benefits, there was a reason why most bloodline cultivators would very rarely, if ever, choose to use this technique to boost their strength. After all, this technique could only be used once, before a person completely exhausted the blood essence in their heart. After using this technique, a cultivator's bloodline would immediately go dormant within their body, as if it suddenly entered hibernation, and it was unknown how long it would take to wake up again. If one was lucky, it could only take a year, but if they were unlucky, it would be impossible to estimate if and when they could use the power of their bloodline again. Still, although Shun Long felt it was a pity that he would temporarily have to sacrifice the power of his bloodline, since it was one of his strongest trump cards, he wasn't too worried about it in the end. After all, he knew of a certain way to make sure that the bloodline within his body would wake up sooner rather than later. At the very least, he wasn't the slightest bit afraid that he wouldn't be able to use it again in the future. Of course, back then, Shun Long had no other choice but to rely on the power of his bloodline to deal with the Golden Rock, so he didn't really have any other choice. That was how terrifying that final bolt of heavenly tribulation had been. His goal at that moment had simply been to stay alive. He had never expected that in the very end he would suddenly end up getting insights into the lightning of the heavenly tribulation itself. In the end, comprehending this Tao of the heavenly tribulation was nothing short of an unexpected windfall. Chapter 906 Intense Longing Regardless, after hearing Shun Long's explanation, Jiang Chen's eyes flashed with a determined look as the aura of darkness around him pulsed with even more ferocity and power than before. It was obvious that not only was Jiang Chen not planning to back down, but he was even eager to check for himself how strong Shun Long's Tao of the Heavenly Tribulation really was. With a smile on his face Shun Long nodded his head, before cracks of white lightning quickly spread out from his arm and soon covered his entire body. After all, Jiang Chen's actions were right in line with Shun Long's own thoughts. The reason Shun Long had asked Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian for a spar in the first place was both to get acclimated to his newfound strength after breaking through to the sixth stage in body refinement, as well as test the power of his Tao of the Heavenly Tribulation. Brother, be careful. I'm really not going to hold back. As Jiang Chen's words echoed in the air, the aura of darkness around him suddenly exploded outwards, turning into a vast, pitch black blanket of darkness that quickly spread out to cover his surroundings. Seeing his surroundings quickly turn dark and sensing the familiar sensation of darkness that was now attempting to block out both his vision, as well as his soul sense, the look in Shun Long's eyes finally turned serious, as the white lightning around him crackled with even more ferocity than before. It was obvious that Jiang Chen was really going all out this time and was even tapping into the power of his eternal darkness unique physique, as he immediately activated his kingdom of darkness, instantly trapping Shun Long within it. A moment later, tens of gigantic black fists made out of pure darkness that looked almost corporeal began to rain down on Shun Long's figure, as they quickly battered onto him one by one. Shun Long's eyes flashed with a bright light but he didn't attempt to dodge Jiang Chen's black fists. Instead, the white lightning around his arms became even more pronounced, while the power of his monarch's eternal body erupted within him as he sent his fists forward in response. This time, Shun Long wasn't holding back either, utilizing the full power of his monarch's eternal body along with his Tao of the Heavenly Tribulation, as his fists met the gigantic black fists head-on. Boom! 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 Consecutive explosions rang out in the air, quickly filling the space inside the Five Elements protective formation, as the gigantic black fists began to explode one by one. Although the power of the black fists was immense, as soon as Shun Long punched out, every black fist that his own fists met instantly exploded before collapsing into nothingness. Still, the number of black fists looked to have no end as they continuously assaulted him from all directions. Off in the distance, a disheveled by Long Tian stared at Jiang Chen's kingdom of darkness that had now completely enveloped Shun Long's blue-robed figure, and after a brief moment of hesitation, 
his figure suddenly turned into a ten meter, thirty three feet, tall golden Buddha, before it shot towards it like a bolt of lightning. Seeing that Jiang Chen had even used his eternal darkness unique physique, Bai Longtian's competitive spirit also flared as his own golden Buddha unique physique finally appeared. Soon, the pressure on Shun Long increased by many times over, as he now not only had to face Jiang Chen's gigantic black fists, but also his combined attacks alongside Bai Long Tian in his golden Buddha form. An incense stick of time later, Jiang Chen's black veil gradually dispersed revealing the three figures it was hiding underneath it. Soon, Xingyi's beautiful emerald eyes opened wide, astonishment plastered all over her face as she took in the scene that appeared in front of her. Jiang Chen's body was still pulsing with his aura of darkness, its power even stronger than before, yet charred marks could be seen all over his robe, as if Shun Long's white lightning had repeatedly struck those spots over and over again without mercy. Although no visible injuries appeared on his body, it was obvious that Jiang Chen had exchanged quite a few blows with Shun Long head-on. As for Bai Long Tian, his situation was almost identical. His gigantic golden Buddha form gradually reverted, revealing Bai Longtian's handsome countenance, and although no injuries could be seen anywhere on him, his robe was also in tatters, as if it had faced a continuous barrage of lightning just moments ago. Surprisingly, Shun Long was also in a similar position as he faced Jiang Chen and Bai Longtian. Although his body was devoid of any injuries, his blue robe was now tattered, torn in multiple spots, while Jiang Chen's aura of darkness and Bai Longtian's golden Buddha energy still lingered on him. Of course, the reason why Xingyi looked so surprised was precisely due to everyone's torn clothes. Although outsiders may not realize what was going on, Xingyi was a smart girl and was clearly aware that every single one of their robes were made from rare materials and had been specially crafted by a rank 2 gold grade formation master. Due to their unique materials and the formations inscribed inside them, even the all-out attacks of a peak rank 3 Dao King realm expert wouldn't be able to destroy Bai Longtian's and the other's robes. Yet not only were Bai Longtian's and Jiang Chen's robes almost destroyed, but even Shen Long's own blue robe was now in tatters. What did this mean? That despite their early six-stage body refinement cultivation, it wasn't just Shen Long but both Jiang Chen's and Bai Longtian's power of their physical bodies that had already surpassed the power of a peak rank 3 Dao King by now. After all, power above that of a peak rank 3 Dao King was required to destroy their robes. With a satisfied look on his face, Shen Long nodded his head as he looked at Jiang Chen and Bai Longtian, before he waved his sleeve and the white lightning around him completely vanished. Then, after sitting cross-legged on the desert below him, he waved his hand, taking out two bottles filled with golden-colored pills, before looking at the two young men in front of him and indicated for them to sit down. Despite their completely different dispositions, the moment they saw the two bottles of golden-colored pills in front of them, both Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian felt their hearts race, before a sensation of deep longing filled their hearts. Although they had no idea what those golden pills were, Bai Long Tian and Jiang Chen could instantly tell with just a glance, even though they were still in their bottles, that the aura of those golden pills was simply enormous, and more importantly, it was something that their bodies instinctually longed for. Chapter 907 Untitled Waving his right hand, Shen Long sent the two bottles flying forward, each of them coming to a halt right in front of Bai Long Tian and Jiang Chen, as the two bottles hovered in the air in front of them. Looking at the two young men sitting in front of him, Shun Long didn't hide anything as he explained with a smile. These pills will be very beneficial to your body refinement cultivation and should help you reach the peak of the sixth stage before long. I refined them using the essence of a ninth tribulation earth immortal, so the energy inside them is completely pure and easy to absorb. Of course, whether you can reach the peak of the sixth stage or not before we leave this place will be entirely up to you. Shun Long's words seemed casual, as if he was making some off-handed remark about something inconsequential, but waves of shock couldn't help but batter Jiang Chen's and Bai Long Tian's hearts as the two of them stared at him with shock and veneration in their gazes. Naturally, 
Either Jiang Chen nor Bai Longtian were fools so they immediately understood what was going on, yet the shock in their hearts only continued to grow as realization dawned upon them. After all, back when they were still in the king's palace, the northern sovereign and various other experts had raised a fuss about a certain treasure disappearing from the core region of the palace. Apparently, it was an extremely rare treasure that the northern sovereign and the various experts there had been trying to get their hands on for many years. Soon, word of it began to spread, and practically every single disciple of a major power in the northern part of the continent came to know that that treasure was actually the skeleton of a ninth tribulation earth immortal which had somehow disappeared from the depths of the king's palace. Naturally, Jiang Chun and Bai Longtian understood that there was no way for all this to be a coincidence. After all, treasures like the skeleton of a peak stage earth immortal weren't cabbage that could be found randomly lying on the streets. And yet this newfound information only served to fuel the veneration they felt for Shun Long even further. After all, not only had he somehow managed to pull the wool over a peak stage sovereign realm expert and numerous other Tao emperors and sovereign realm experts, but he even managed to get his hands on the skeleton of a ninth tribulation earth immortal and even withstood its pressure as he refined it into pills. How many star rank alchemists in the central region were capable of refining such a skeleton into pills? Jiang Chun and Bai Longtian weren't aware of an exact number but they were absolutely certain that even the best star-rank alchemist of the holy sect, Xingyi's master, Elder Mao Jing wasn't capable of that. Seeing the hesitant looks on Jiang Chen's and Bai Longtian's faces, Shun Long grinned and pushed the two bottles directly into their hands before he continued. Don't worry. Although these pills were a bit hard to make, they only contain a sliver of the skeleton's true essence. Still, it should be more than enough to push you to the peak of the sixth stage in body refinement. Without another word, Shun Long stood up and dusted his clothes, leaving Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian behind, before he made his way towards Xingyi in the distance. Xingyi's long blonde hair fluttered in the wind, while a soul-stirring smile now adorned her beautiful face as she looked gently at Shun Long's approaching figure. Although he was somewhat used to it by now, Shun Long couldn't help but feel his heart stir as he gazed at the peerlessly beautiful young woman in front of him, whose emerald eyes looked back at him with boundless admiration and affection. No matter how many times he looked at Lu Mei or Xingyi, Shun Long had to admit that both of them seemed to become even prettier as time passed by. Of course, this was the effect of a higher cultivation base alongside one's natural beauty. It didn't matter if a person was a body refiner or a chi refiner, as their bodies absorbed the pure spiritual energy from the air around them, their appearance would grow more and more refined as they expelled the impurities within them. And of course, the effects on Xingyi were even more obvious now that she had been absorbing the pure immortal chi from the heaven-swallowing vine for the past two years. Her skin was fair as jade and her bright blonde hair that cascaded down her shoulders like two golden waterfalls only served to accentuate her beauty that could only be described as kingdom toppling. Her bright emerald eyes contrasting the natural beauty of her vivid red lips made her seem like an immortal beauty that had just walked out of a painting. Standing in front of her, Shun Long then placed his arms around Xingyi's lithe waist, and in a rare display of affection, he pulled her in as he hugged her gently before he whispered in her ear, I know I've neglected you and Maya recently. But don't worry, once we leave this place I promise I'll make it up to you. A tinge of redness quickly appeared on Xingyi's face as she blushed, and burying her head deeper in his embrace she just gave him an affirmative sound as she felt the warmth coming from his body. After holding Xingyi for a while longer, Shun Long then sat down on the ground a few meters away from Lu Mei and turned his gaze towards the heaven-swallowing vine, as he prepared to continue his qi cultivation. He had spent the past year inside the foggy space in the stone of time continuously refining the essence of the golden skeleton and turning it into pills, as well as breaking through to the sixth stage in his monarch's eternal body, thus neglecting his qi cultivation by quite a bit. This was why, right now, he knew that the most important thing he had to do was make the most out of the immortal qi inside the city of immortals and strengthen his foundation in the Tao King realm even further. In fact, 
Shan Long wasn't planning to leave the endless desert until he became a late-stage Dao king. A moment later, the indistinct figure of an hourglass suddenly appeared around him, completely encapsulating Shan Long within it. Before the immortal chi from the heaven-swallowing vine began to surge in his direction at a terrifying rate. Chapter 908 Consecutive Breakthroughs Part 1 The days slowly turned into weeks, the weeks eventually turned into months, and the months gradually turned into years. Yet the silence within the five elements' protective formation wasn't disturbed by anyone or anything, as Shun Long and his group continued to cultivate without stop constantly absorbing the vast amounts of immortal chi that the heaven-swallowing vine unceasingly produced. Occasionally, the sound of fighting would shatter the stillness and quietness of the endless desert as the sound of metal clashing with itself could be heard, but even that would only be momentary, like a cool gust of wind briefly passing by, before the surroundings quickly turned calm and serene once again. Naturally, Groups fighting each other over fortuitous opportunities were anything but rare inside the city of immortals, especially as time continued to pass and opportunities naturally became fewer and fewer, but none of that mattered to Shan Long and the rest. After all, very few fateful opportunities would be on the same level, as the effects of the pure immortal chi that the heaven-swallowing vine continuously refined in this place. Besides, after clashing with that peak rank nine Dao King, Mao Huang, Back in the illusion oasis, Lu Mei and the others all came to realize that they had truly underestimated the geniuses of the central continent. With their former cultivation bases, even the most average of peak rank nine Dao kings would be able to easily toy with them as they pleased, and they wouldn't even be able to so much as fight back against them. That was why, before venturing out to explore the rest of the city of immortals again, they all had to increase their own cultivation bases to a satisfying level first. As the fifth year mark gradually came to an end, vast amounts of pure immortal chi continued to gather around Shun Long and the others just as they had constantly done during these past years, when suddenly, a series of consecutive popping sounds filled the air coming from Lu Mei's direction. Those sounds were originally weak, sounding like water bubbles popping, but as time continued to pass, their intensity gradually increased, and in just a few minutes, they had already turned into powerful sonic booms that caused gusts of wind to whip out around Lu Mei, pushing everything away from her. Soon, even by Long Tian and the others who were sitting a good distance away from her felt the commotion affecting them, as they all broke out from their cultivation states and turned their attention towards her. Of course, Shan Long was no different from them. In fact, the moment those popping sounds emerged from Lu Mei's direction he was the first one to open his eyes, before a rare expression of surprise quickly covered his face. Naturally, he knew that those popping sounds were none other than the sounds of Lu Mei's Dantian expanding violently right now, indicating that she was about to break through to the peak of the Dao King realm. Whenever Dao Kings were about to advance from the middle of rank 9 to the peak, their Dantian would forcefully expand as much as possible, allowing them to absorb as much chi from their surroundings as they could before completing their breakthrough. This was why many cultivators in the central continent considered their breakthrough to the peak of the Dao King realm almost as important as their breakthrough to the Dao Emperor realm in the future. After all, the more chi they absorbed during this breakthrough to the peak of the Dao King realm, the higher their chances would be to reach the sovereign realm later on. In fact, plenty of Dao emperors had been stranded in the Dao emperor realm their entire lives, unable to truly become sovereigns, all due to their weak foundations back when they were still Dao kings. The Grand Elder of the Holy Sect was one such example as well. No matter what he did later on, there were very few things that could help him break through to the sovereign realm afterwards, all because of his weak foundations in the Dao king realm. At this moment, Shun Long's eyes glittered with a hint of anticipation as he stared silently at Lu Mei's distant figure madly absorbing the pure immortal chi around her. He knew that during this breakthrough, there were only three things that could affect the final result. A person's own natural talent, their cultivation technique, as well as their own willpower. As for the Tao they had comprehended or the unique physique one was born with, it wouldn't provide them with any help. Thankfully, 
There were no signs of the blood absorption art affecting Lu Mei's mental state right now, allowing her to completely focus on absorbing the qi from the heaven-swallowing vine. Shun Long wasn't sure if it was because Lu Mei's mind had grown more resilient with time, or if it was the effects of the pure immortal qi counteracting the negative side effects of the blood absorption art, but from the looks of it, Lu Mei didn't seem to need any help to complete her breakthrough. Shun Long then watched as Lu Mei's silky black hair fluttered tempestuously in the wind, before her aura began to grow stronger and stronger with every passing moment, and like a caged beast that was finally about to break free, an incense stick of time later. It abruptly exploded outwards as it broke past the last hurdle of the middle rank nine in the Dao King realm before it eventually reached the peak. The moment this happened, Lu Mei's willowy figure trembled intensely, before her body started to pulse with an extremely thick, almost overwhelming aura of death that soon began to spread in her surroundings. Thankfully, other than Shun Long and the others, there was nothing else in Lu Mei's immediate vicinity, aside from the innumerable grains of sand that covered the surface of the endless desert, so no one else was affected. And yet, to Xingyi's and the others' astonishment, the moment that Lu Mei's aura of death touched the grains of sand around her, the sand's natural color quickly began to fade as the original lively orange quickly turned into a darker shade of brown, before eventually turning into black. It was almost as if all signs of vitality had completely vanished from the sand around Lu Mei in mere moments, leaving behind nothing but those black, lifeless grains of sand that were now filled with that thick scent of death. Chapter 909 Consecutive Breakthroughs Part 2 At the same time, even from a distance away, Shun Long could now sense the immense power coming from Lu Mei's figure, which was powerful enough to momentarily affect him even through the protection of his own monarch's eternal body. And yet, this was just the aura that Lu Mei's body was involuntarily exuding, so one could only imagine how strong she would actually be if she really went all out right now. This what is this pressure? How is it so strong? Is this the real difference between a peak rank 9 Dao King and a late stage 1, or is this all due to Sister Lu's Dao of Death? Bai Longtian's voice was muffled, sounding almost akin to a soft whisper, and yet Shun Long could still hear the faint tremble in his voice as the handsome, long-haired young man stared at Lu Mei's distant figure in complete astonishment. Even though Bai Longtian and Jiang Chen had both stepped into the late stages of the Dao King realm by now, while Xingyi herself was already a rank 9 Dao King, in front of this terrifying pressure coming from Lu Mei, none of them were really a match. They could all tell that in an actual fight against her, unless Bai Longtian and the others made use of most of their trump cards, none of them would be able to last for more than a couple breaths of time before losing. This was how terrifying the pressure coming from Lu Mei right now really was. A moment later, Jiang Chen's eyes gradually turned serious before he answered coolly. This is the fundamental difference between peak stage Dao kings and normal late stage ones. This is also why that Mao Huang could act so arrogantly back in the illusion oasis and extort others for their immortal water without fear of getting ganged up by others. Ultimately, Peak rank 9 Dao kings are no different from supreme existences in this place. The moment someone reaches the peak of the Dao king realm in both their cultivation, as well as their comprehension of their Dao, they are practically considered to be already half a step into the Dao emperor realm. Average late stage Dao kings have no chance against them. Bai Longtian and Xingyi both nodded their heads after hearing Jiang Chen's explanation while their gazes were completely glued on the distant Lu Mei whose aura had finally started to recede little by little by now. Although Bai Long Tian and Xingyi both came from peak-level factions back in the Night Star Continent, back there, even the strongest experts like Bai Long Tian's father were only peak-stage Dao kings. Thus, even though the two of them could be considered fairly knowledgeable overall, in front of Jiang Chen whose father was a true powerhouse at the rank 9 of the Dao Emperor realm, their knowledge of cultivation fell rather short. Nodding his head, Shun Long agreed with Jiang Chen's explanation, while a myriad of different thoughts began to course through his mind. A few moments later, however, he shook his head as he thought to himself. Staying in the endless desert and letting Mare and the others absorb the immortal chi from the heaven-swallowing vine was really the right choice. 
staring at the distant setting sun, a faint smile silently bloomed on Shunlong's lips, as the cool breeze of the endless desert gently caressed his face, while also dispersing the faint scent of death that had already started to cover everyone's surroundings. At this point, Shunlong knew that it would be a lie if he said that he wasn't tempted to explore the rest of the City of Immortals with Lu Mei and the others. With the map that he had purchased from the White Tiger Chamber of Commerce a few years ago, as well as the numerous stories circulating throughout the central continent about this place, it was common knowledge that the entirety of the City of Immortals was no different from a gigantic treasure trove waiting to be explored and harvested. Rare treasures that even sovereign realm experts may not find in their entire lifetimes existed aplenty in this place for everyone to grab. However, after their last encounter back in the illusion oasis with both Mao Huang, as well as that black-robed peak rank 9 Dao king who had tried to assassinate him, Shun Long had already decided that he wasn't going to leave the endless desert until he became a late-stage Dao king first. He wasn't certain if he would have enough time to reach the peak of the Dao King realm before the rumored ten-year time period came to an end and everyone was expelled from the City of Immortals like they had in the past. But he was at least confident in reaching the late stages before that happened. Still, it wasn't that Shun Long was afraid of the black-robed Dao King who had ambushed him back then. After all, after reaching the fifth stage of the Dao King realm, he was already confident in killing the man should the two of them clash again. However, Shun Long was already thinking of another matter. If I'm not wrong, even though that guy was hiding his identity, he should most likely be among the 100 strongest Dao kings in the White Tiger Chamber of Commerce's list. Although his strength was nothing too extraordinary, his speed was actually quite fast. Even if they were all peak rank 9 Dao kings, it's probably only Long Tian among Mayor and the others who can compete with him and match his speed head on. After this thought coursed through his mind, Shun Long took a deep breath and sat cross-legged on the ground once more, as he quickly emptied his mind and began to absorb the pure chi from the heaven-swallowing vine once again. The grains of sand around him were once again filled with the overwhelming aura of the pure immortal chi that the heaven-swallowing vine unceasingly produced, as a gigantic chi vortex quickly began to form above his head, greedily sucking in all the chi that it could absorb from its surroundings. Although Shun Long wasn't afraid of the black-robed man and was even confident in killing him, he knew that he couldn't waste any more time here and could only do his best to improve his cultivation as much as possible in the few years that he had left in this place. After all, that black-robed man was not the only threat he would face in this place. If Shun Long wasn't wrong, that guy would only rank in the lower end among the 100 strongest Dao kings inside the City of Immortals. This meant that there were at least 90, or so more peak-stage Dao kings who were far superior to that guy in strength. And these were just the Dao kings that the White Tiger Chamber of Commerce were aware of, who knew if there were any other monsters similar to Shun Long and his group, keeping themselves hidden from the public eye so far? Would all those people just wait and wander around idly in the City of Immortals? or would they begin searching for fortuitous opportunities to increase their strength even further in the Dao King realm, grabbing as much as they could while they were inside this gigantic treasure trove? Shun Long didn't need an answer to that obvious question, which was why he was going to make full use of the next few years, bringing his strength as high as he could to contend with those monsters. Chapter 910 An Eye for an Eye Part 1 Months continued to pass quietly but peacefully for Shun Long and his group inside the protection of the Five Elements Protective Formation, and yet everything else seemed to remain mostly the same. Large groups of Dao kings would often wander through the scorching sands of the endless desert as they traversed through it, some of them on the backs of powerful rank six magic beasts while others as parts of large groups, but none of them would ever disturb Shun Long and his own group mainly due the concealing effect of the protective formation that covered them. Occasionally, gusts of warm wind would often find themselves gently caressing Shun Long's face, carrying with them a faint scent of blood whenever nearby Dao kings clashed with each other or with any wandering nearby magic beasts that blocked their way. But even those warm breezes would be quickly refined into streams of pure immortal chi by the heaven-swallowing vines soon afterwards. 
It was a monotonous routine where Shun Long would continuously absorb the pure unending streams of immortal chi from the heavens swallowing vine every day, constantly using them to form new golden balls of chi inside his dantian, as his cultivation slowly inched closer towards the peak of the Dao King realm. And yet Shun Long himself didn't seem to mind any of this in the slightest, and in fact even relished in this rare moment of peace. No matter what, it was a fact that ever since entering the City of Immortals, Shun Long and his group had never really stopped fighting wherever they landed. Whether it was during the so-called preliminary trials in Demon Fang City where they had to hunt down those 5,000 Demon Fang mice, or even after passing the trials and entering the second stage of the City of Immortals when they met Li Tian and his group, that early rank seven Dao King from the White Tiger Chamber of Commerce. A fight always followed wherever Shun Long found himself. Even back in the stone mural when everyone was merely studying the profound daths carved on the mural, or even back in the illusion oasis where all the Dao kings present fought over the drops of immortal water, the situation remained largely the same. Although being constantly dragged into fights quickly turned somewhat annoying, in the end, Shun Long understood that this was all due to the fundamental unspoken rules of the city of immortals. Ultimately, everything depended solely on one's own power. If a person appeared weak but stood out too much others would usually attack them without much reservation. However, if a person was sufficiently strong, those same people would think twice before making a move. This was why Shun Long didn't mind spending some time peacefully like this inside the Five Elements protective formation while increasing his own strength. Of course, Absorbing the pure immortal chi wasn't the only thing that Shun Long did during the day. Whenever he felt that he had already absorbed too much immortal chi and needed time to assimilate it, he would usually take a break and spar with Jiang Chun and the rest before turning his attention towards his body cultivation. And yet those sparring sessions that were merely an afterthought were no different from killing three birds with one stone. On one hand, Shun Long needed to stretch his muscles and further practice his Tao of the Heavenly Tribulation and become even more familiar with it, while Lu Mei and the others were the perfect sparring partners at this point. At the same time, Shun Long had already surpassed that so-called realm of masters back in the stone mural and had already reached the level of sword aura, but he hadn't really found the time to test out his new sword skills this whole time inside the City of Immortals. However, these sparring sessions with Bai Long Tian and the rest allowed him to gradually solidify his recent advancement. At the same time, Shun Long could tell that both Jiang Chen's saber slashes as well as Bai Long Tian's sword strikes, and even Xingyi's dagger skills had been rapidly improving during their sparring sessions, leaving the two young men and the young woman beside themselves in astonishment, followed by feelings of jubilant glee. In fact, Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian who were already close to the peak of the realm of masters could now tell that even if they left the city of immortals right away, it was only a matter of time before the two of them reached the levels of saber aura and sword aura respectively. Even Xingyi who was still a distance away from reaching the peak of the realm of masters could feel her dagger skills improving rapidly with every sparring session, making her even more determined to give it her all and catch up to Jiang Chen and by Long Tian before they left this place. In the end, only Lu Mei appeared slightly dejected when she felt her own sword skills growing stagnant, unable to catch up to the others regardless of how hard she practiced. However, after being chided by Little Black who told her that cultivators of the Tao of Death didn't have much of a need to focus on weapons in the first place, the young woman nodded in agreement and concentrated on what she was best suited at improving her control of her undead army. Of course, not everyone could be a sword or saber genius. Talented people like Jiang Chen and Bai Long Tian were complete outliers, and they only appeared above average because they compared themselves with a monster like Shen Long. The truth of the matter, however, was that the two young men were complete geniuses of their own. Even among other Tao kings, there were very few of them within the city of immortals right now, who could compete with them using purely sword or saber skills. Even Xingyi herself was extraordinarily talented with a dagger, which was why her own skills were advancing so rapidly with every sparring session. As for Lu Mei, when compared to the vast majority of Dao kings out there, 
her sword skills could only be considered average at best. But of course, this was the harsh reality of the world. Everyone had their own areas where they excelled, and the same went for Lu Mei. Although the beautiful young woman's sword skills could merely be considered average at best, Shun Long understood that Lu Mei's talents lay in soul cultivation instead. Months continued to pass, and finally, half a year later, Xingyi was the second person in the group to become a peak rank 9 Dao King right after Lu Mei. The aura of a second peak rank 9 Dao King quickly suffused the enclosed space of the Five Elements protective formation, causing everyone to snap out of their reverie and stop whatever they were doing, as they all turned their attention towards the golden-haired young woman standing at the center of it all. The moment she sensed Xingyi's breakthrough, Lu Mei's bright red lips suddenly pressed together, forming a brilliant, soul-stirring smile, before the two young women almost simultaneously turned their gazes towards the east, as if on cue. It was finally time to take back what had been stolen from them. Chapter 911 An Eye for an Eye Part 2 A few moments afterwards, Lu Mei's calm voice sounded through the air a hint of a smile suffusing her lips as she stared at the blonde-haired beauty in front of her and asked her, How does it feel, Xingyi? Becoming a peak rank 9 Dao King really feels different, doesn't it? After taking a moment to fully sense all the changes that were taking place inside her body, Xingyi couldn't help but fall silent for a while, before eventually nodding her head and answering in a somewhat bewildered tone. Is this what it feels like to become a peak stage Dao King? No wonder peak rank 9 Dao kings are revered so much for their strength. As she said this, Xingyi lowered her head and tried to suppress as much as she could the overwhelming aura that her body was now involuntarily giving out. It was just as she had just said. Becoming a peak stage Dao king was indeed vastly different compared to normal late stage Dao kings. This difference wasn't one that could be described with just a few words either. It was only now after reaching this stage herself, that Xingyi finally realized why peak stage Dao kings could roam the city of immortals unafraid of practically anyone and anything else in this place. It wasn't something as simple as merely another advancement in one's cultivation base, but more importantly, it was due to the cumulative evolution of the strength and comprehension of the Dao that these Dao kings experienced the moment they reached this peak. After all, a peak rank 9 Dao King could only be considered to have truly reached the peak, only when the comprehension of their own Dao reached the peak of the Dao King realm alongside their cultivation base. Otherwise, if one's cultivation had already reached the peak of the Dao King stage but their comprehension of their Dao was still lacking behind it, or in some extremely rare cases where one's comprehension of the Dao had already reached the peak of the Dao King stage but their own cultivation base had yet to catch up, those people still couldn't be considered true peak stage Dao kings just yet. One needed to have attained both to claim this title. As for Xingyi, although her cultivation had just advanced to the peak of the Dao king realm, normally, she would have needed more time for her comprehension of her Dao of Shadows to catch up to her cultivation, before she could be considered a true peak stage Dao king as well. However, it just so happened that Xingyi was the type of person whose own comprehension of her Dao outpaced her actual cultivation base. Due to her increased affinity towards the Dao of Shadows that she possessed thanks to her Vanishing Shadows unique physique, Xingyi's comprehension of her Dao had already reached the peak of the Dao King stage a while ago, and was in fact, slowly edging closer towards the Dao Emperor realm by the day. Although she was still very far away from becoming a bona fide Dao Emperor, even if she did nothing else and merely focused on consolidating her cultivation base for the following couple of years, it was only a matter of time before she eventually broke through to the Dao Emperor realm as well. These were the benefits of being born with an extremely rare unique physique. Most cultivators had virtually no hope of catching up to someone like that, at least not without their fair share of fortuitous opportunities as well. And now that both her qi cultivation and comprehension of her Dao of Shadows had reached the true peak of the Dao King stage, Xingyi could finally experience the qualitative evolution that all peak stage Dao Kings got to enjoy for themselves. Moments later, her luscious golden hair flowed with the wind as the stunning young woman sat on the ground and closed her eyes, 
focusing her senses on the myriad of shadows that were present everywhere around her. Whether it was her own shadow, Lu Mei's own, or even Shun Long's and the other's shadows, and even the shadows created from the countless grains of sand themselves, it seemed as if every single shadow in her vicinity was now being affected by Xingyi's mere presence, and was madly scrambling to get closer towards her. As if the shadows themselves were trying to embrace the beautiful young woman and protect her, hiding her beneath their dark veil. Staring at this peculiar scene in front of them, Lu Mei and the others remained quiet for a few moments as they observed everything in silence, before Jiang Qin eventually nodded his head and commented in a calm tone. Back when I was a kid, when my father used to teach me the basics of cultivation, he constantly emphasized the importance of the Tao King realm and building a strong foundation before ever trying to become a Tao emperor. He always pointed out that only those cultivators who had reached the absolute peak of rank 9 in the Tao King realm were qualified to roam through the central continent with a certain degree of safety, without actually risking their lives at every twist and turn they faced. Jiang Chen's voice then trailed off momentarily, as his deep black eyes stared intently at the hundreds of shadows that had already wrapped themselves around Xingyi's body and were slowly turning darker and darker with every passing moment, as if the shadows themselves were gradually turning even deeper and more pronounced as time passed. Before the devilishly handsome young man narrowed his eyes and continued speaking. And the reason behind this all is due to this powerful aura that all peak stage Tao kings naturally exude when they finally reach the peak, the aura of a pseudo-Dao emperor. Turning his head to look at the taciturn Lu Mei just a few meters away from him, Jiang Chen's expression didn't change, but his voice turned slightly more serious as he continued. Half a year ago, during your breakthrough to the peak of rank 9, I couldn't understand why your aura was so deadly that I couldn't get a good feel for it even from a distance away but now I finally do. In the next moment, however, just as Jiang Chen's voice trailed off and disappeared into the distance, Lu Mei, who was curious to hear the rest of his explanation, suddenly frowned while her gaze abruptly turned cold and unfeeling, before the ground beneath her feet suddenly started to violently shake. At the same time, Shen Long, who was just about to sit down and continue his secluded cultivation, widened his eyes before an incredulous expression quickly found its way to his face shortly afterwards, as a single thought coursed through his mind. There is actually someone brave enough to attack my five elements' protective formation? Chapter 912, An Eye for an Eye Part 3 At the same time, just as Shenlong's thoughts trailed off, a group of six men and women could be seen conversing with each other at the very edge of the five elements' protective formation all of them staring at the thin translucent veil in front of them that had merely rippled for a single second, before quickly returning to normal once again. Seamlessly blending back into its surroundings once more. Huh, this is actually surprising. This formation isn't just a concealing formation after all, it also has some defensive properties as well. This thing even took Elder Ling's punch head-on, and was barely even affected. Clad in a set of luxurious black robes, an old man with a hideous scar under his left eye eventually exclaimed, his gaze a mixture of surprise and curiosity, as he stared at the thin protective veil of the enormous formation in front of him. That old man was radiating an aura of natural authority whenever he spoke, as if anything and everything were inherently beneath him, and yet the shock was still apparent in his eyes as he examined the peculiar formation in front of him that seemed to span for miles and miles in the distance. It appeared as if the formation his group had chanced upon encompassed a great deal of distance throughout the endless desert, and yet, the old man had never heard of this specific formation before. Of course, something like this wasn't too unnatural by itself. After all, the City of Immortals had only opened for a couple of times in the past, and every single one of those times had only lasted for approximately ten years or so, so there were still far too many secrets that had yet to be unearthed. Considering how vast just the endless desert by itself was, and the fact that nobody had managed to fully explore it yet despite the overwhelming number of Tao kings that had entered this place and the years that had gone by already, it was simply impossible to estimate the true magnitude of the entire city of immortals as a whole. 
However, the luxuriously robed old man was mainly surprised by another reason. It was solely for the fact that this formation was relatively close to the famous stone mural, and yet he had no information about it whatsoever. How could such a powerful formation be this close to the mural and yet not been found by any other cultivators yet? Was this a new, naturally formed formation, or did some powerful formation's grandmaster place it here? And if it was the latter, why? What was their true intent? Was there something special about this place that others had yet to figure out yet that person had already found? The old man didn't know but he was certain he was going to find out. Even more surprising, however, was the fact that the old man couldn't accurately pinpoint the formation's core. In the beginning, it seemed as if the formation was extremely large, spanning for countless miles throughout the desert and covering an extremely vast distance. But after ordering one of his companions to attack it, the old man was left even more confused than before. The moment the formation absorbed his companion's attack, the thin translucent veil started to contract and expand intermittently, causing the entire formation to surge, before effortlessly blocking a strike from a peak stage Dao King, as if it was nothing but a weak gust of wind that simply fell upon it. Of course, as a formation's grandmaster himself, the old man could easily tell that the five elements' protective formation absorbed the immortal chi in the air to operate and block his companion's attack, causing him to come to the conclusion that this was most likely not a naturally created formation. And since that was the case, that could only mean one thing. This formation must have been placed here by another peak rank three gold grade formation's master. As this thought coursed through his mind, the old man's eyes narrowed dangerously before he turned towards his companions and spoke in a calm voice. If I'm not wrong, this formation was most likely created by another peak rank three gold grade formation's master. Although I can't pinpoint where the formation's core lies exactly, I am confident in breaking it in less than one month if we all join hands together. What do you all think? The luxuriously robed old man's words were like a bolt of thunder striking the hearts of his companions, causing their relaxed expressions to immediately turn somber before they all turned their attention to him in shock. Of course, the changes in the five people's expressions were only natural as well. It would be one thing if what they were dealing with was just a naturally created gold-grade formation. But if it was one set by another peak rank three gold-grade formation master, then things were entirely different. After all, high-level alchemists and formations masters were always respected and sought after by most powerful clans and organizations back in the central continent, and the city of immortals was no different in this regard. No one would thoughtlessly choose to offend a high-level formations master if they could avoid it, and the same went for their group. Although their company consisted of six peak rank nine Dao kings, one of whom was even a powerful gold-grade formations master as well, Offending another peak stage Dao King proficient in formations wasn't something that could be done at one's whim. However, the old man didn't seem perturbed by the changes in his companion's expressions in the slightest, as he once again turned his attention towards the peculiar formation in front of him and continued to examine it deeply before he continued. I know what you are all nervous about, but there is no reason to be too worried about it. You are afraid that by attacking this formation, you will offend the gold-grade formation's master who set it up, aren't you? After a brief moment of silence, a middle-aged woman in green robes finally stepped forward, nodding her head as she looked at the black-robed old man before answering respectfully. Elder Ming, it's not that we don't believe in your abilities, but offending another rank three gold-grade formation's master for no reason isn't that wise either. It would be one thing if we knew that there was something special about this place. But since we don't know if there is anything of real value to us here, how about we just let it go? However, the luxuriously robed old man, Elder Ming merely sneered when he heard the green-robed woman's response, causing his eyes to narrow dangerously into two thin slits making the scar under his left eye even more pronounced, before he answered mockingly. Tell me then, Wang Dongmei, do you really think that someone would set up a formation like this, here in the middle of nowhere? for no apparent reason? That a rank three gold grade formation's master would spend so much time and resources setting up a concealing formation, simply to hide themselves in this place? 
hearing the black-robed old man rebuking her so openly, the green-robed woman lowered her head in shame unable to come up with a retort, as she realized that the old man's words actually made sense. Indeed, whether it was the old man's stance on this matter or his status within their group, both were compelling enough of a reason to force their entire group to make a move if he was dead set on doing something. Besides, what were the chances of a powerful formation's master setting up such a powerful formation in the middle of nowhere for no real reason? It was practically zero. The green-robed woman was simply reluctant to offend another peak gold-grade formation's master without knowing if the fight was worth it. However, since the black-robed old man had already made his stance clear, Wang Dongmei knew that there was no turning back. Nodding her head, she then clasped her hands towards the black-robed elder and said respectfully, It seems that I was the one who didn't think things through this time. Since Elder Ming is confident in breaking this formation, I'm naturally willing to help. Finally, a smile started to appear on the black-robed man's face after hearing Wang Dongmei's response before he turned his gaze towards the remaining four of his companions waiting for their own answers. Seeing that no one else was disagreeing with his plan, the old man clapped his hands and prepared to give out orders to the five peak rank nine Dao kings accompanying him, ready to arrange them in specific spots around the formation to prepare and break it. But it was at that moment that the thin translucent veil of the formation suddenly started to ripple. In the next moment, it seemed as if space itself was violently trembling and twisting before the thin translucent veil finally parted, and from the inside, the pristine figure of a white-robed woman gradually walked out in the open. This young woman was extremely beautiful, so much so that one would actually think she had just walked out of a painting if they laid eyes on her for the first time. She had an extremely fair complexion, a perfectly shaped nose, and a pair of rosy red lips as well as starry-like black eyes that resembled the depths of the abyss itself. Despite being covered by her white robes, it was obvious that this woman's figure was just as flawless as that peerlessly beautiful face of hers. This was, without a doubt, one of the most beautiful women that the black-robed Elder Ming had seen in his life. However, the undisguised death aura that was coming out from her body made it obvious that this peerlessly beautiful woman didn't come with kind intentions and was now staring coldly at the six-peak stage Dao kings in front of her with undisguised hostility in her eyes. Just as Elder Ming was about to speak to her, however, one of his companions abruptly stepped forward, staring incredulously at the white-robed young woman, before he opened his mouth and asked in disbelief, You, are you Lu Mei? Chapter 913, An Eye for an Eye Part 4 You, are you Lu Mei? The person who had just asked this was an old man in spotless white robes, with a clean-shaven face and neatly combed long white hair that reached all the way to his waist. He had a pair of kind eyes that looked extremely innocent at first glance, but his expression was one of complete disbelief as he stared at the stunningly beautiful young woman in the distance. Although Lu Mei wasn't wearing the robes of a holy sex disciple anymore, the old man only needed a single glance to figure out her identity. At the same time that his voice rang out, Lu Mei turned her gaze away from the black-robed Elder Ming and glanced at the white-robed old man for a couple of seconds, before a look of realization quickly dawned in her eyes. Elder Zhuan? Of course, since the white-robed old man had already recognized her, how could Lu Mei not recognize him as well? After all, this was the same elder responsible for overseeing the final part of their test, when Lu Mei and the others entered the holy sect for the first time. Hearing Lu Mei confirm her identity, Zhuan Ping felt his entire body tremble for a brief moment, before a myriad of different emotions began to course through his eyes one after the other. What is going on? Didn't this child only enter the holy sect merely a decade ago? How is this possible? How is she already a peak stage Dao king? The white-robed elder Zhuan couldn't believe his own eyes as he stared incredulously at Lu Mei's figure in the distance. No matter how he looked at it, the old man couldn't fathom how the young woman in front of him could already be a peak rank 9 Dao king. How could it be possible for her to reach the peak of the Dao king realm in just ten years or so? It didn't make any sense. After all, 
Xuan Ping could still remember Lu Mei being a weak nascent soul stage cultivator just a few years ago, back when he himself was already an exalted peak stage Dao King. And yet, in the span of a mere decade, Lu Mei seemed to have caught up to him in her cultivation. The more he thought about this whole situation, the more incredulous Xuan Ping found it to be. After all, Xuan Ping had been stuck at the peak of the Dao King realm for more than 300 years already, and he was even considered relatively talented among his own peers as well. It was merely his foundations that were somewhat lacking and didn't allow him to attempt a breakthrough to the Dao Emperor realm just yet. That was also the reason he had entered the City of Immortals this time in the first place. To find something that would allow him to finally break past his limits and reach the Dao Emperor realm in one fell swoop. And yet, in just a little more than a decade, a small nascent soul stage cultivator had somehow caught up to him. Zhuan Peng wanted to sit Lu Mei down and ask her all about her experiences during the past few years and find out how all this could be possible. But it was at this moment that the black-robed elder Ming suddenly took a step forward, appearing right next to him before the black-robed old man finally spoke. Zhuan Peng, it seems you are already familiar with that little girl, aren't you? That's good. You can save us some time in this case. Since you two are already acquainted, go ahead and tell her to step aside and open up the formation for us so we can take a look inside. The white-robed elder Zhuan Peng who was preparing to chat with Lu Mei suddenly stiffened after hearing Elder Ming's unexpected order, before he hurriedly turned his gaze towards the black-robed old man in shock. No matter what, Zhuan Ping was still an elder of the holy sect and a peak-stage Dao king as well, so how could he possibly abuse his power over a junior like that, and even make such shameless demands on top of it all? After all, both Zhuan Ping and Elder Ming were well aware that neither of them had any actual justification to ask Lu Mei to open up the formation behind her, other than a threat of force. Besides, Lu Mei could no longer be considered one of Zhuan Peng's juniors in the first place, now that she was a peak rank 9 Dao King as well. In fact, Zhuan Peng suspected that the young woman in front of him wasn't the slightest bit weaker than him anymore. Of course, Zhuan Peng was still confident that Lu Mei's battle experience couldn't possibly compare to his own, considering that he had already spent thousands of years honing his skills throughout the entire northern region of the central continent but the white-robed elder was still aware that as far as talent went. Lu Mei was definitely at the very peak of the entire holy sect right now. Noticing Zhuan Peng's reluctance to speak, Elder Ming gradually frowned clearly dissatisfied with the old man's performance, before he continued. Zhuan Peng, don't tell me you have suddenly changed your mind. If that's the case, you can go ahead and leave our alliance. I promise I won't stop you. However, I can tell you one thing. I am going to break open this formation, with or without your help. It will only take me a few more days, that's all. After a brief moment of contemplation, Elder Ming's voice gradually softened as he looked at Lu Mei's distant figure before he continued. Of course, considering the fact that you seem to have some type of relationship with that girl, I won't be too forceful on this matter either. After all, I understand that we are in the wrong here. I am only asking her to step aside and let us have a look inside the formation. If there really is nothing of value inside, we will naturally take our leave after having a look, and if there truly is some type of treasure hidden within, then we can split it in a fair and just manner. Of course, this is my final concession on this matter. Whether she accepts our terms or not is up to her. Although it seemed as if the black-robed Elder Ming had been talking to Zhuan Ping this entire time, his gaze had been completely focused on Lu Mei as he uttered each word. Clearly, this message was meant to serve both as deterrence, as well as show her that Elder Ming was willing to make certain concessions and avoid truly fighting if they could solve things amiably between them. Unfortunately for the black-robed Elder Ming, Lu Mei didn't seem the slightest bit intimidated by the fighting prowess of the six peak rank nine Dao kings from his group. Instead, a cold, Murderous glint could be seen in the depths of her eyes as the stunning young woman stared coldly at the black-robed old man along with the rest of those five Dao kings standing behind him, before her gaze gradually nestled on an unassuming middle-aged man standing at the very back of the group. 
After a brief moment of silence, a thick, almost palpable burst of killing intent suddenly erupted from her body, as Lu Mei looked at this unassuming middle-aged man and asked coldly, Are you the one who attacked our formation earlier? Chapter 914 An Eye for an Eye Part 5 This time, it wasn't just Zhuan Ping or the black-robed Elder Ming who were stunned by Lu Mei's response but the remaining four peak rank nine Dao kings as well staring at the aloof young woman in front of them with looks of incredulity mixed with unconcealed astonishment. Not only had Lu Mei chosen to ignore Elder Ming's request with a look of contempt clear in her eyes, but she had even turned her gaze towards the bald, unassuming man shortly afterwards, and even identified him as the person who had just attacked the formation. Regardless of how composed they may have appeared earlier, the six peak stage Dao kings couldn't help but be caught off guard at this point as they finally began to reassess this young woman in front of them, no matter how they looked at it. Whether it was her attitude or the way she carried herself despite the danger she was currently facing, both were clearly out of the ordinary. As soon as those words left Lu Mei's mouth, however, the black-robed Elder Ming and the unassuming middle-aged man silently exchanged glances with each other, before the looming tension in the air abruptly turned even more oppressive and deadly as the two peak stage Dao kings finally turned serious for the first time in a while. Indeed, that simple-looking, unassuming middle-aged man whom Lu Mei had just targeted was precisely the same person who had just launched an attack on the Five Elements protective formation a while ago, and was someone whom even the arrogant black-robed Elder Ming had to respectfully address as Elder Ling. With a calm look on his face the unassuming Elder Ling suddenly took a step forward. And yet with just that single step, the middle-aged man seemed to have traversed more than a dozen meters in a flash, causing him to arrive right in front of Lu Mei before he replied with a smile. Little lass, it seems you are quite perceptive. Not bad. Even though I've been concealing my aura this whole time, you could actually tell that I was the one who attacked your formation right away. Although your cultivation base is still unstable, at the very least— the power of your soul is not bad. Elder Ling's tone was nonchalant as if he was just making some casual remarks, but the hidden meaning behind his words was clear to everyone present. In his eyes, although Lu Mei's soul sense was extraordinary, that was all there was to it. It was her only extraordinary quality. As for her cultivation base, although this white-robed young woman was a peak rank nine Dao king as well, the unassuming middle-aged man could tell that Lu Mei had just broken through to this level barely a year ago and had yet to truly consolidate her advancement. Therefore, how could she possibly compare to an experienced peak-stage Dao king like him who was only a few steps away from the Dao emperor realm? What Elder Ling didn't seem to know, however, was that Lu Mei had already assessed his entire group's strength the moment she stepped out of the Five Elements protective formation and had already decided on her next course of action. Before her last breakthrough, she may have had some trouble taking on a group of six peak rank nine Dao kings all by herself, but now, Lu Mei was fully confident in dealing with people who were merely at Elder Ling's level. Without even throwing the bald middle-aged man in front of her a second glance, Lu Mei turned her gaze toward the distant Xuan Ping, and after a moment of silence, she cupped her hands and bowed slightly towards the white-robed elder, as she said calmly. Elder Xuan, considering our past relationship and in consideration of my master, I hope you will not involve yourself in this matter any further. I don't care about the rest of them, but the person who attacked our formation just now, as well as the black-robed man who instigated everything, will both have to pay. The white-robed Zhuanpeng was taken aback by Lu Mei's words, but the unassuming Elder Ling's eyes flashed with a cold light when he heard that, before he roared out in an enraged voice. How impudent! Elder Ling's voice seemed to contain some powerful, mystical quality, causing his surroundings to tremble as a shockwave traveled rapidly from his location straight towards Lu Mei. Almost at the same time that his voice echoed out, the middle-aged man's right hand punched through the air in an extremely swift motion, aiming straight for Lu Mei's chest. It was obvious that this seemingly unassuming man was not holding back anymore after hearing Lu Mei's response, and was finally revealing his true strength. 
The aura of a peak six stage body refiner surrounded Elderling's fist, as the man aimed to take out the young woman in front of him in a single strike. In a conflict between peak stage Dao kings, Elder Ling was a person who knew fully well when to be soft and negotiate and when he had to fight. If they could resolve things peacefully with each other, the middle-aged man wouldn't mind letting Zhuan Ping negotiate in their stead, but since Lu Mei had already made her stance clear, Elder Ling knew that it was best to deal with his enemies as quickly as possible. As for whether Lu Mei would survive his attack or not, the middle-aged man wasn't the slightest bit concerned. Since he had already decided to reveal his full strength, he was going to make sure that the young woman in front of him was either going to end up dead, or at the very least crippled. After all, a peak stage Dao king wasn't someone who could casually be captured, unless they were mortally wounded or on the verge of death. Unfortunately for Elder Ling, mere moments before his fist could connect with Lu Mei's chest, two massive dark red great swords immediately blocked his path on the spot causing his attack to come to a sharp halt. At the same time, from the ground beneath Lu Mei's feet, a pool of darkness seemed to have manifested out of thin air, causing an extremely dense aura of death to pulse out from within. And from the depths of that darkness itself, a pair of shadowy figures gradually emerged, their burning purple embers that served for eyes staring straight towards Elder Ling's soul, like a pair of grim reapers who had finally come to collect. 